Good afternoon. Welcome to WK in the community. We are so happy to have you back. We thank everyone who let us know they enjoyed our May Mother's Day edition and our June Father's Day edition. We met some very amazing mothers and um, we met some very amazing fathers during those two months. This month actually brings everybody together because it is National Family Reunion Month, which actually started on July 1st, and some celebrated all month. And it's also July 28th, World Hepatitis Awareness Day. So what I wanna say is, please watch the whole program because it is going to bless you tonight. We have a wonderful guest, evangelist April Todd, who will be speaking to us on the importance of unity in the family, which is in honor of National Family Reunion Month. So you don't want to miss what she has to say. And, you know, just to mention a quick blurb about hepatitis, if you're experiencing abdominal pain, fatigue, loss of appetite, and um, you know, if your skin, if you notice that your skin is yellow um, and uh, your eyes are yellow, you notice that your stools are pale and your urine is dark, these are some signs that you could have uh, one of the hepatitises. I know some people don't even know that there's more than one hepatitis, but just to name a few, there's hepatitis A, B, C, D, and E, and a new one also, um, which they call uh, autoimmune hepatitis. So we just want you to be aware of those signs. And if you do display any of those signs, even flu-like symptoms, you can you need to follow up with the doctor because we know we're still dealing with COVID-19, but also that is a symptom as well of acute hepatitis. So you would want to follow up with the primary care doctor. If you don't have a primary care doctor, you would want to follow up with the doctor that you do see whether it's at a medical aid unit or how, however else that you see the doctor. But you do want to make sure that you follow up with someone. I'm not saying that you have hepatitis, but you could be displaying some early signs of hepatitis and you want to get that treated. You say real quickly, how would I prevent it? Well, some ways that you can prevent um, any type of hepatitis is of course watch um, you know, you exchanging any body fluids, um, especially, you know, um, you know, I know we have kids watching the program, but especially during sex, you want to keep yourself protected. Also, if you use needles, you want to make sure that you don't share them, even to the point that you don't want to share a razor with someone else. These are all things that can help prevent you from getting um, different forms of hepatitis, as well as watching the amount of raw food, especially seafood that you eat, shellfish, oysters, you want to avoid those type of foods. And just like I said, there are different types of hepatitis and there's different risk factors that I use as an example that could cover various different hepatitis. So I don't want you to think, oh, I have hepatitis B, when it may not be hepatitis, but it, or it may be another form of hepatitis that can be treated. So you need to just make sure that you follow up with the doctor. And also we're going to continue with our theme, which is uh, unity in the family. So I'm going to turn you over to Pastor Wendy, who is my mother and my partner on the show. And she's going to give us an inspirational point for family unity. Wendy? <laughs> well, hello everyone. And it's so good to be back again. And Truly, we are living in a time where if ever there's needed to be, a family reunion is now. And I know that because of the, you know, the virus, the coronavirus, it's very hard for families to get together. But, you know, I thank God for technology because technology allows us or affords us the opportunity to reach out and to touch people that are even at a distance. Yes. You know, so... I want to encourage you to take the time to even plan family Zoom calls. You know, it's time to reunite. 
I love that Absolutely. word reunion because you know it a union is a coming together and becoming one mm -hmm. and a reunion is when you have um, been away from each other disconnected in some kind of way but you need to reconnect so I'm encouraging you tonight uh, to reconnect with your family this is so important from the beginning of time God ordained family family was his idea praise God you know I was looking in Genesis and it lets us know that in the beginning God created male and female and you know of course the first family was from Adam and Eve and it said he made them male and female and at that time this is in Genesis chapter 1 by the way and we're not going to get into a lot of scriptures tonight but at that time the purpose was to repopulate the world but also to have a family you know so God is family minded yes. God is for the family he mm -hmm. wants family you know and it was funny because when I thought about it I thought about the fact that he even made uh, Jesus Christ and called him his son because God always wanted a son and he wanted he he allowed Jesus Christ to come that he could start a family yes and through him we have become family you know many of us maybe aren't family by blood but we're family by the spirit and so I thank God for family today. I thank God for the importance of each member of the family, starting with the male. Praise God, without the male, there would be no family. Without the female, there'd be no family. It takes two, praise God. And when the two come together as one, when they unite in unity, praise God, then anything can happen. And what happens usually is family, praise God. God wants you to be productive. Yes. Not counterproductive, but productive. productive. Like Praise that. God. Even in our families, there's so much right now that we need to do. We need to be there for our children. We need to encourage them because a lot of them may even have fears they can't even express. But, you know, I'm encouraging parents, stay with your families. Use those opportunities now that we now have when you can't be out everywhere. Use those opportunities to create a family time and to do things together. I remember growing up and we always had a discussion at family dinner time. Mm -hmm. Family dinner time was a set time. We'd come together, have our prayer, our grace, praise God, and, and don't forget God. I don't care what you say, don't forget him in your house because you need him right now, praise God. But we'd come together and we had family dinner and there'd be so much discussion and at that time, that's when I learned to relate to my parents, praise God, because they were there and they were listening, but they were also sharing important information. So I'm encouraging you to, today to really get together with your families. Parents, listen to your children. Children, listen to your parents. Praise God, listen to your parents. You know, it's important to be obedient, especially in this season. They say, don't go, don't go, mm -hmm. you know, because it's for your good. You know, it, it, it talks about in Proverbs, and by the way, parents, that's an excellent book to raise your children by. Yes, I is. love the book of Proverbs. It never misses. Praise God. All kinds of questions you may have on what to do and how to do it. If you get into Proverbs, praise God, you'll find that you'll, you'll know a lot more than you thought. Praise God, there's so much good news for you and, and help. You know, God wants to help us to raise our families. We need his help. Yes, we, we need do. his wisdom. You know, because guess what? He was the first father. He was the first father. He created Adam. Praise God. You know, when Adam got out of the way, he did correct him. You know, sometimes parents, don't be afraid to correct your children. Just do it in love and do it the right way. Don't be afraid. It's, if you don't correct them in some cases, it says you don't love them. But as you correct them in a right and loving way, it's for their good. It's for their benefit. It's for their life right now. It's for their life. Praise God. I just want you to know that God is for you. And children, it says, um, in, it says, have you children the instructions of the fathers, or hear you children, I'm sorry, and attend to no understanding. 
For I give you good doctrine, forsake ye not my laws. For I was my mother's son, tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. But the important part is, hear the instructions of your father. Children, listen today, because listening can keep you out of trouble. It can keep you from a, a bad situation. It really can. It's there to protect you. When parents are saying certain things, it's because they've already experienced it a lot of times, and they know what's going to happen. Praise God. I'm so glad that I listened at times. Sometimes I didn't, but when I did not, I, I, I came to realize it. And I came to know that, guess what? Mother was right, mm -hmm. and I was wrong. Praise God. Dad knew what he was talking about, even though I didn't think so. Praise God. I knew exactly, exactly what to do and what not to do. So we thank God today. We thank God for all that he's doing through us and saying through us. But most of all, we thank God for you. And we pray that you continue to put into practice praying with your family. Staying with your families. Fathers, you're needed in the home. Mothers, you're needed in the home. Children, you need your parents. Stay together, especially during this season. And love one another. This is a real good time to, to love one another and learn from one another. Because I think we're having forced to be closer than we've ever been before. Praise God. And you don't know what's coming up the pike, but guess what? God knows. And I'm telling you, we need to really stay together and walk in love and unity. God bless you tonight. And thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Wendy. I love those words of inspiration. And I pray that you did as well. Family unity is very important. It's just yes. as she pointed out, it comes even from the Bible. Amen. And um, I just want to remind people just briefly uh, they just showed on the news a couple days ago where there was an increase in Delaware of 121 new cases of COVID-19. I want to remind you to continue to practice social distancing and to continue to use your hand sanitizers. And you know they should be 70%. And wash your hands for at least 20 seconds. We still need to keep doing that. And wear your cloth mask on your face uh, even if you wear it in the store don't feel as though that you know you should take it off when you get in the store the stores are asking you to wear them to keep other people safe as well as yourself so I just wanted to remind you that COVID-19 is still here and we need to continue to practice the CDC guidelines Thank you very much for everything that you do as our viewers. And we thank you for allowing us to keep you informed and to help uplift you. Right now, we're going to take a short break and we'll be right back with you. Thank you so much. Hello, I am excited to come to you today 
And before I get started, I would like to take this opportunity to say a great big thank you to WK and the community for giving me this opportunity and this space to share. I've been asked to talk to you today about family because it's family reunion month. So I'm going to talk about family, but I'm going to talk about family in light of COVID-19. And I'm going to talk about family relative to the topic of loving our family through COVID. Loving our family through COVID. So before I uh, get into loving our family through COVID, I just want to give you a basic definition of family. Family is a group of people made up of spouses, children, parents, grandparents, grandchildren, aunts, uncles, cousins. Family is a group of people that are related by blood, a group of people that's related by ancestry. So that just gives you a basic definition of family. I also want to talk about family reunion. And talking about family reunion just brings a big smile on my face. Because if anyone knows me, they know that I love family gathering. I love the time when our family come together and we have the opportunity to just uh, share and just relax and have family time and just share family history and family stories and play games and just, you know, sit at the table and just, you know, just talk to each other and share good food and great fun. So I love that. So I love the idea of family reunion. That family reunions are unique to every family. Some families have real elaborate family reunions where they go away on trips out of the country or, or on cruises. And some families have our backyard barbecues, which I love the idea of having a backyard barbecue family reunion. You know, where you wear the t-shirts and the family names are written on there with special sayings. I can just smell the barbecue, you know, grill going and hear the music playing and just see the passing of lemonade and iced tea, a wonderful time. You know, family playing games and just sitting back, just chilling and relaxing together as a family. It's a wonderful event and a wonderful time. There are other times that family have the opportunity to come together and gather there are weddings and birthday celebrations and bridal showers and baby showers. And there are, you know, anniversary celebratory events that we can share time together and celebrate one another as family and have the opportunity to come together with our immediate and our extended family. Maybe a family that we haven't seen in months or even years. It's an exciting time and a wonderful time to come together. And most of us and many of us look forward and are excited about those times, those times to come together and share as family. So family reunion is one of those, those special events that are even planned, you know, way in advance. May have been planned last year or planned at the beginning of the year. Um, a lot of planning goes into it, especially if you have ones that, you know, are more elaborate. A lot of planning goes into these family events. So, you know, there are exciting times, a time of planning, a time of sharing. But there was a situation that happened this year, as we all know, with the coronavirus and COVID-19, which put a screeching halt to a lot of our events, a lot of our family time, a lot of our family reunions and, you know, our celebratory events of uh, uh, celebrating graduations and celebrating bridal uh, weddings and bridal parties and bridal showers and baby showers. So all of these things, a lot of these events had to be canceled. It was a very disappointing time for a lot of us and a lot of our families. It was a very uh, disappointing time to know that we couldn't move forward with the events that we had planned and, you know, events that we were anticipating and so excited about. So I want to talk about that. I want to talk about how we how we love each other, support each other through this disappointing time. Love each other through COVID. It was a, it's a time that, you know, we really didn't have um, the opportunity to even come together as a family that may have lived not even far away because of social distancing. We had to just remain within our family unit and our family home. We couldn't go out and about like we normally would and be amongst our family. It's a very difficult and challenging time. So how do we love each other through COVID? How do we love each other 
through this disappointing time. So there are many, many ways that we can do that. But I just want to talk about a few, just a few examples of how we can manage this and how we can navigate through this time with our family and supporting our family. Many have participated or will participate in the car line. That is a wonderful opportunity to share. And many have seen that, maybe you've seen that on Facebook or seen that posted, you know, on Instagram, where you have a car of a line of cars that go by um, the house and they are celebrating with that family member. It may be a special occasion like a graduation or an anniversary or a birthday. And you have uh, signs, you know, posted and you have balloons and you're cheering and you're beeping the horn and you have special sayings of love written on the side of the car. And you just drive by and, you know, you don't stop, you don't connect, but you just wave and you just, you know, give a lot of, of, of cheering and happy times as you go by. So we have that um, ability and to do that. And those are wonderful. And we've seen that. And that's become really popular. But also I want to talk about, you know, taking the opportunity to use technology. We have FaceTime, Facebook, Zoom, Instagram. And some of us are really comfortable with, with technology. Some may not be as comfortable. But if you're not as comfortable, now's the time for you to just get out the box and, you know, dust the cob cobwebs off and say, let me, you know, let me try this out. Let me do this. Because it's a wonderful opportunity, like using Zoom, to come together as a family. Some people play games on Zoom as a family. Some people have times of sharing and eating together but not together as family. So what I mean by that, you can come together and have dinner time as family and I can have my piece of chicken and you can have your piece of chicken and we can just sit and talk about, you know, how good our, our chicken is, even though we had to cook it ourselves, but we're just talking about our food and just gathering together on Zoom and just talking about, you know, family things and family um, events that maybe we can even plan for the future. So these are avenues of technology that I encourage everyone to use and to take advantage of and to do it more frequently than not because it gives us the opportunity to come together and to share. There's research that says that if we don't have face-to-face -face interaction, we can go into, into a state of depression. We can uh, suffer anxieties and um, we can suffer you know, fears and uh, loneliness and all of these things that can happen as a result of being separated and not having that interaction with our families. So it's important to get interaction in any way that we can and by whatever means that we have available to alleviate that emotional stress and uh, emotional challenges that, you know, some of our families may have. Some of our families, especially even our elderly, of those and those that are empty nesters may suffer from loneliness and times of fa family gathering that we may have gotten together for a family reunion or for a birthday celebration was a great time for them to get out and to share with the family and to you know and to and to join together and be embraced by love and not having that a lot of times will lead people into having some emotional uh, challenges. So we want to make sure that we use these avenues of the drive-bys and use these avenues of technology and bring our family together. And we may have done it here and there, but I think now is the time that we need to really just increase and make a, um, a, a proactive step and really just doing it more often and doing it with family and just checking on them more often. There's another thing that we can do to help our family with a disappointing time of not coming together and maybe not having that time of sharing that we normally would. And it's old school, but I think it's something that maybe we could re resurrect or need to resurrect. And that's mail, just writing a letter, sending a card, sending a little note with pictures. These are things that are wonderful to get, especially when you're not, uh, anticipating it when it comes by surprise when you're not expecting it it's like wow you know this is they sent me this this is wonderful and just an example of that i had a dear friend of mine 
it was my birthday in April. And as you know, that was the height of the whole COVID-19, the, uh, the um, uncertainty of it all was there. We had to shelter in place. So I didn't expect, you know, really to do anything for my birthday. I was just glad to have the opportunity to have another birthday and to, you know, and to be safe. So it was no big deal. I wasn't, you know, expecting or planning to go out. It was just, you know, one of those things that I knew that we were just going to be, I was just going to be sitting home, just relaxing that day. But to my surprise, the doorbell rang. And I went to the door and it was a good friend of mine. And what she did was made a homemade cake from scratch. And she made um, cupcakes to go with it. And she put it in a sweet little container and put it at the door where I could reach it. I was so excited. I saw her. We didn't embrace, you know, of course we kept our social distancing. But just the thought of that, just the thought of, of the kindness and the sweetness of her doing that made my day that made my birthday it put a smile on my face and it warmed my heart so getting unexpected things like that like you know a letter or a card in the mail or just a little a token of love that maybe you'll um give to your family member and just drop it by and leave it at their door is wonderful opportunities to show love and to love our family through COVID and to love our family through this disappointing time of not having the opportunity to gather and to share we, with each other like we normally would. So taking advantage of, again, that card line, taking advantage of um, the technology that we have, maybe going back and mailing letters, doing something that, you know, we've haven't done in years because you know because we do have the the technology but just you know going back and maybe mailing a letter or a card or a special note something like that that we haven't done so these are things that we can do to help support each other and love each other through COVID through the disappointing times another thing that we can do is love each other through pain love each other through pain there are times in, in our families that we do not have good, good vibes. Maybe our families are all warm and fuzzy. Maybe there are times when, you know, we've had arguments and we've had uh, disagreements and there are families that have um, tension. There are families that have um, ongoing family rivalries over years and just, you know, really, um, times of, of, of family, you know, disagreements and things like that, that maybe there have been divorces and separations. So these things can hit our family really hard during this time as well. So how do we love each other through COVID, through family pain? Well, the big thing that we can do with that is forgive. These are times now that we need to take the opportunity to forgive. We need to uh, embrace our family and love on our family and forgive them for maybe things that have happened and things that have occurred. These are uncertain times. We don't know what's going to happen. Sometimes the next day or, you know, within the week, things are steadily changing with COVID-19 and we're not sure um, of what's going to happen in months to come. But one thing we can do, we can love each other and we can operate in a spirit of forgiveness. Forgiveness is an awesome tool that we have to really show love and give love to our family. It's a time that, you know, we can just say, hey, we can let bygones be got bygones and just hold each other and embrace each other as family. Sometimes that's, you know, easier said than done, I know, but it's something that I believe if you pray about and if you put it before God, he's able to mend broken hearts and he's able to heal wounds. But we have to allow him to do it and give him the opportunity to do it by stepping out and saying, you know what? I'm going to really try hard to move past certain things that has happened in my family. Maybe certain things that, are, that were done to me, certain things that I felt were unfair and just really operate in forgiveness and just love on my family because I know now that we need each other. I know that without my family, it is difficult and it's challenging sometimes. But when we have a, a network, a group of people that, you know, are united 
by ancestry, united by blood, united as a family um, group, then we can lean on each other and depend on each other. So forgive. Forgiveness, you know, helps us navigate and helps us through this time of COVID. Loving our family through the pain. So we love our family through, through the disappointment. We love our family through the pain. And we're also going to love our family through stress. As we know, this is a stressful time as well. Times of um, uncertainty regarding our financial situation. Maybe some of our family don't know if they're going to have a job or, or be able to get a job. Uh, don't know how they're going to make ends meet. Maybe our family are concerned about their children going back to school. Will there be school? And if there's no school, will there be childcare so I can work? You know, will I be able to continue to, to make ends meet? So and keep food on the table. So these are challenges that a lot of our families are faced with as well. And we can help and, and love our family through, through this time. And not only just say, I love you, but we know love is an action word. So that means that we have to do something as well. So we want to say, I love you. And then we also want to be able to activate that love by doing something. So what can we do during this stressful time and help love our family through the stress? We can be uh, a resource uh, to, 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 to talk. We can also uh, open our pantry and our cupboards to allow our family to, you know, have an opportunity to get something that they need. We can, if we have a paper towel extra, we can share that. You know, it's a time to bring our village together and make sure that we love and support each other and not only said in word, but also in deed and really share the resources that we have. It may be just, you know, being on the phone with them and just having an ear to listen and hear, you know, what they have to say and their concerns. It's important. Also, we need to, talking about, you know, communicating, we need to pick up the phone and talk to our families more. That's also a way to support our families. Just out of, you know, the blue, picking up the phone and say, I just thought about you and I just want to talk to you today and make sure that you're okay. Do you need anything? And just give the opportunity to, you know, bond that way and to share that way. Maybe families that we don't normally talk with every day. We can say, hey, you know what? I don't normally talk with this particular family member every day, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call them up. I'm going to make sure that they're okay. I'm going to make sure, you know, that if there's anything that I can do to help, that I make myself available to that family member. These are ways that we can help and love on our family through COVID through the disappointment of not being together, of having family events maybe canceled or postponed and, you know, helping each other, you know, by lifting each other up so that we're not um, caught by the enemy and sinking into a state of depression or loneliness or sadness. You know, when we have each other and we can lean on each other as family, that gives us, a, gives us support and helps us helps us rely on one another. So navigating through these times and uh, helping family through family pain and helping us to forgive one another. So it may be something that, you know, wasn't specifically done to me. Maybe it was done to another family member. You know, life and death lies in the power of the, of the tongue. So we have the ability to bring comfort and to encourage each other to forgive. You know, we can say, hey, you know, let's let's let it go. Let bygones be bygones. Let's go ahead and move past this. Bring each other together. Let's forgive and let's, you know, give give this opportunity now during this time and this season to really, you know, share and love on each other. It'll feel good. It'll feel wonderful to you if you do that. It's it's what God expects us to do. He says for us to love each other and to forgive one another. You know, there's a verse in the Bible that Peter asks, how, how often should I forgive my, my brother? Seven times? And the Bible says, no, seven times 70. So we're to keep operating in a spirit of love and a spirit of forgiveness. So that's one way, too, that we can love and, and embrace our family through this time. So lastly, we can pray. 
That's the first thing we should do, even though I'm talking about it at the end, but pray. We should pray with our family and pray for our family. Pray with our family and pray for our family. We should pray that our families remain intact, that our emotional stability, st uh, stability remains intact, that we pray for our families and our um, uh, children of our family. And pray that, you know, they're protected and a hedge of protection surrounds them, that their financial needs are met, that they can, um, you know, find work and all the things that may be needed in that particular family. It's an opportunity to come together and really uplift and undergird our family and prayer and intercede for our families. So that's the, one of the most important things that we can do in our prayer time, in our special time of um of setting aside time to pray is to pray for our families and uplift our families. So these are just some things that we can do to love our family through COVID, to keep our family uplifted and embraced through COVID, bringing our village together and loving on our family through the, through the disappointment, through the pain, through the stress. When we come together, and uplift each other as a family, we can, you know, bear each other up and it becomes a lot easier because there's more of us that will come together and bear and bear and share. So I would like to um, thank you so much. That's the, that's the end and I hope you got, you know, something out of, out of that today. And I hope you are encouraged to, you know, to reach out to your family today. I hope you are encouraged to love on your family Today, I hope you are encouraged to pick up the phone and talk to family maybe that you haven't spoken with in a while. I hope you are encouraged to let go of some things and forgive. I hope you are encouraged to get excited about technology and to get on the different platforms and even talk about things that we're going to, you know, family that we can gather and plan for the future. That's an exciting thing to do. So I hope you are encouraged to do these things and love your family through COVID. Love your family through COVID. So again, I thank you so much, WK and the community, for giving me this opportunity to share and to just give some thoughts and insights on family and loving our family through COVID. God bless. say real estate pros here with Pedro uh, with quality credit repair and today we're going to discuss a couple of things but the first thing I wanted to ask you is what is bad credit that's a great question bad credit is this bad credit is when someone neglects their personal finances ultimately and it could be anything it could be just a late payment or maybe they forgot something and they got a collection on their credit report. But ultimately, that's where it starts. That's the core of the situation. But there's also different types of bad credit, which is, uh, for example, a, a judgment or something that you didn't necessarily pay late, but possibly it got uh, placed on your credit report because of, uh, you know, because of a judicial hearing or something like that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the other thing I want to talk to you about, I get this question a lot. What it, how is the scoring work? Uh, what is good credit, bad credit, you know, as it pertains to your credit score? Well, that's a great question, realistically. We don't have to narrow it down to one specific score, because if you think about it, right, if I'm a 600 and you're a 640, you're better than I am, technically, right? Mm -hmm. Am I right? Now, if someone's a 680, they're better than you, right? Right. But that doesn't necessarily mean that that 680 can't, 
me, uh, shouldn't speak to a professional like me. Because we could get them over the 700 mark and actually save them tons of money. And you know that. Yes. So in a nutshell, statistically speaking, and this is written, you guys can look this up. Eight out of ten people can benefit from sitting with someone like me. So instead of locking yourself down to one score, just say to yourself, if you ever had a question, I should talk to this guy. He might be able to give me some advice. Absolutely. And I'm so glad that, uh, you know, Pedro brought that point out because oftentimes you can think of utilizing a professional for credit restoration will require someone just with bad credit. But there may be a, a variety of reasons, including getting a mortgage, why you may need improved credit. Just like you would get a checkup um, uh, with your, you know, with your doctor or your physician. Right. Um, credit is very vital. Uh, and Pedro mentioned how it can also save you tons of money. Of course, that being the interest rate that's assigned where most uh, lending institutions will have a scoring system there based on your credit score to assign you a rate. So hopefully anyone that has any questions, please contact us or DM us. And thank you for watching. And Pedro, thank you very much for those tips. Singleton Street Talk. I just want to thank you so much for joining me on Street Talk. Real fast, I want to talk about still I'm seeing a lot of people without that face mask. We don't want uh, what's happening in other states to happen to here, us in Delaware, or any of the other states. So please put your mask on. It's summertime and a lot of people, there was, uh, you know, I've seen graduations where uh, people are not wearing face masks, backyard barbecues, uh, family gathering, and uh, because it's family, it doesn't mean that you don't necessarily have to wear uh, face masks in certain settings. So I just wanna really just target that for a moment. Also, family, family, family. It is so important because you have to capture your children and your teenagers back into your family. Now is a really good time to think about family structure and really take a good look to set, 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 take a, take a step back and take a good look. Do we have family structure in our home? Do you know what makes a home? What makes a home is, is, is the family. It's not the house. It's the people that live in the house. Family can consist and can be made up of, uh, different structures because you can have the grandmother, grandfather uh, with uh, the son and daughter. It could be a family where now you are no longer staying with your parents. You're 20 or 25. You have your own place and you have some people that is sharing your apartment or your house. You need to create a family type atmosphere. Family is strength. Family is strength. Strength is another word for family. When you have family that is close knit, it really is, it creates a safe place. I made a comment and I said, uh, capture. Maybe I should use another term. We have to work on and think about this, if I do not have the family structure that I would like to have, I don't know where my son is, I don't know where my daughter is, they're not listening to us right now. Uh, if it's a single parent home, you might have that situation. If it's not a single parent home, you still may have that situation. Everybody's going their separate way. But in these days and times, 
You really want to know where everybody is and you want to protect your family. Now, because of situations that have happened in the home, division has happened. And you'll find a lot of times that the members of your family have found another family to become part of. Now that family can be a gang in the street. It could be a street gang. It could be a bunch of friends that they spend the majority of their time with and their conversation is more or less like what should be discussed at home among family now is being discussed outside of the home with uh, other people to where they have bought themselves together uh, as a family. I find that a lot of young people nowadays, they are so fast to say, that's my sister. It's someone that's no, not even related to them in any kind of way, but they'll say, that's my sister or, or that's my brother, okay? When really they haven't even established a friendship as of yet, okay? So, I'm talking about broken families. To, if you want to re restore your family, restore your family structure, you have to actually go and get or uh, do what is necessary to harness, bring everybody back in, and then rework your family, uh, restore your family. It's very, very important because it can keep your children your young adults, even you. It can keep you safe from what? Hurt, harm, danger, kidnapping, fights, being shot, being in the wrong place at the right time. Because, you know, we're going to have these rough spots in family. Somebody's going to be upset about something or there's going to be an attitude about something but if you work on the love part and the forgiveness part, you can really get uh, your, the, your family back together. I, I keep thinking about the younger people because they're on my mind right now, but it, it doesn't necessarily have to be young people. It could be, it could be a family and a house full of adults, but they're living in a family structure but they have uh, put themselves in a position because somebody's gotten upset. So they put themselves in a pos position where they have become part of another family outside the home. But it's so important. So I hope I gave you something to think about, okay? Family, there's a whole lot of people that'll tell you, I don't have family. I don't have family. And in some cases, that is true. But you can always connect yourself. If you don't have a family, and you, you're by yourself, you don't have a family, or your family's nowhere nearby, okay? Um, I, I really want to focus on this, because even if you have a family that's a, a distance, it's, it's, it's worth the trip to keep that unity together, to show up to whatever you can show up to and be a part of. But if you genuinely don't have family, for whatever reason, maybe you have been uh, separated or uh, some people, I understand, their family has denounced them or say you're no longer part of this family. It's important still to find yourself a family. Find a group of people that you can establish an atmosphere for yourself where you feel as though that you are among family. Do you know one place where you can always become part of a family? At your local church. You can find a, 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 a group of Christian people who love God and that they have enough love to share with you because Thank God that uh, he has 
God established family and there's a certain family structure that the Bible teaches and I'm certainly not going to go into that right now. But one thing I can tell you that there were a lot of church family, church family, they go beyond membership. They understand themselves that when they call themselves sister and brother and so on and so forth, they have been together and worshiped together that long that they have set a family type of unity with one another. So find a good Christian family, a good Christian church family, because there's a lot of, of, of churches that are like that. They are structured, they are structured for family, and they teach a lot concerning family unity. Okay, now let me go to one other part. I'm, I'm very concerned. Now, the crime is high. The crime is high. We have had in Delaware, specifically in the Wilmington area, we, we're still having shootings, okay? In the last past three weeks, I, I, I've heard of at least four young people that have, have been shot, okay? Thank God all of them did not leave this planet, but they're seriously hospitalized. Be careful. Always try to know uh, where your young people are. Your young, and it's just not about the young, young males or the young adults that are males, your young men. It's also your young daughters, okay? and their uh, teens up to 25. Try to always know, try to establish a relationship with them where they can at least tell you the area or something about where they are, what they're doing, because it's important. They can be at the wrong place at the wrong time. You wanna protect your home. And a good way to protect your home is to get that verbal communication among your family members. I hope this was a help. This is Malachi Singleton, Street Talk. Uh, we are just so happy for our segment today and we hope that you were blessed. And I just wanna tell you that if you have any prayer requests or you would like to be a guest on our show or even if you would like to just share some comments, we've been getting some wonderful feedback you can always write us at P.O. Box 422, Newcastle, Delaware, 19720. Or you can always email us at wkgiftshop at gmail.com. And you can always call us if you need to talk about this, being a guest on the show or if you would like to request any of us to come to you or if you'd like to learn more about the gift shop behind the show. And that number is 302-722-4627. I want you all to have a great evening. I'm going to close out with a quick word of prayer. And I want you to have a great evening and a wonderful week going forward. Dear God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for allowing us to do yet another segment. And we just pray over this state. We pray, God, that you will continue to protect each and every person, God. We pray, Lord God, that you would comfort those who have lost loved ones during this time. And we pray, Father God, that for those that are still sick, Lord God, that they would recover. And we just ask you to bless every viewer, Lord God, in a special way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a good day. I'm hungry and I'm ready for change I run to fathers to be the same See who I was, I gave him away Today Today No longer bound by what people say 
Somebody, 